Stay tuned for another magnetic dome plate review coming up. Hey guys, it's Jeff. Welcome back to the corner. What I'm going to do this week is I've been working on this um, KP3S over here for a while. Um, and now my last bit for my parts came in. It is a magnetic PEI sheet. And this one, yeah, purchased on AliExpress, comes with the envelope, comes with this great packaging of cardboard. Comes with your typical PEI front with a, there, let's peel that off. Beautiful, right? But it also comes with a PEI, or mm, it, also, <laughs> it also comes with a uh, powder coated back plate. I don't know, can you see that? Look at that. So let's take this sheet here and I've already done a review on the Intertech um, PEI sheet, but we haven't done a review on the uh, powder coated side. So let's see how this powder coated side works. We're going to test it with a few different materials. We're going to do some flex on it. We're going to do some PETG, some PLA, of course. Um, and I'm going to walk through how to um, set up this and we're going to look at the results. Okay, here we go. Okay, so one of the things that I'm going to have to do here is I need to adjust the bed height for the probe because I've changed the magnetic sheet to the PEI sheet here, but they're at different heights and it's going to send off a different probe sensor. So what's going to happen here is, because this was on before, right? So you have the thickness of this plus the thickness of the other magnetic pad before the probe even reaches here. So it's going to throw that off by a little bit. So what we're going to do is we need to remove this. We're going to add the PEI textured sheet onto here. And then what we need to do is we need to readjust our, um, our offset here. So I am going to um, log into Pronterface. And what I'm going to do is try to check the, uh, the height of the offset. So that's four and a half there. Okay. And that will give me clearance. I'm going to preheat while I'm doing this. Okay. So we're going to connect. And we're going to M503 it. So this gives me my level. But what I'm looking for is my Z probe offsets. So what I need to do... Is with my M. 851. We're going to go M851. Oops. 851. And it's going to be Z. Now it's already minus 1.32, so we're actually going to make that Z minus 5. 4.4132. So that's seven three point seven three sending M five hundred and M five oh three to make sure it took. So see now it's there. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna try to print.
So once the bed is leveled, what I'm doing is I am adjusting the Z probe offset in the configuration menu of Marlin, and I am lowering it slightly in order to get a good first layer. Now I wanted to start this a bit higher so I wouldn't scratch the bed originally, and then I'm slowly lowering it until I get the um, what I think is a good squish. And now on with the testing. Yes, so. I'm at the computer now and I figured that I might as well um, print something that's practical. So what I'm going to do is, this ha looks like it has a nice wide base to it, and I can also use it for my many collections of <laughs> M3-4s and 2 screws that I have kicking around randomly, just so I can organize them. So it looks like a pretty good model. To show off the texture on the bottom, I go into Prusa Slicer. Oh, and just ignore good old Bernie in here, right? And just delete him. Um, and we are looking for the um, measuring device, thread marker. Let's go with the sanitized one because I don't think that one's marked. So it's got a nice flat base here. So we'll use that in Prusa Slicer. Now, but what I'm going to do here is this one I will print in PLA. And we will start by doing that. So I have my PLA profile. Um, 0.2 seems fine. So 0.2, let's go 20%, none. And let's slice this. So what I want to do is actually, I'm going to do a color change on this because if I'm doing it for myself, for a useful tool, as well as a demo, I want to be able to, um, you know, make it look a little nice. So let's see here. Where are we going to go here? Right there, I think it is. Is it one more up or we want the color change right there? Perfect, look at that. Let's check out the, um, so two hours and three minutes. That's perfect. Okay, so this one's going to be PLA. Um, metric screw measuring device. Export it. We will eject our card. Perfect. All right. And off to the printer. So let's see here. The uh, the P E or the P L A the P L A is done. Let's take a moment to look at that decent uh, little print there. Okay, and um, let's see how um, easy this is to pop off. Now it just finished, but you're supposed to let this cool off entirely before you uh, pop it off. I think it's down to room temperature right now. I'm not going to temp check it, but we're just going to give it a Whirl. All right, so we're just gonna pop that off, and ooh, that looks pretty good. Oh, look at that! I don't know if you can see that texture there. All right, I'll take a picture of a close up, but it's got a nice little texture to it. It's got a nice little finish on the bottom. It looks pretty good. So. I have a little tool and I managed to uh, do this in PLA. It's got a nice finish on the bottom. Okay, now on, I'm gonna do some uh, PETG, PETG, and we're gonna try that. All right, so the PLA test went pretty good. I am now gonna try and print a PETG wire gauge. I'm gonna use this model here um, because I might as well print something that's useful for me. Now, it does have a large base to it as well, so I'll get a good texture on the bottom. I am curious, though, um, 
based on my PLA test, I did not have an elephant's foot on my guide, so I think that's okay. I don't know how this one will come out. I'm hoping it comes out okay. I will do multicolor again. Our old model in here, let's just delete that. Oh. Yes, and then we're going to bring in our wire gauge. There we go. So yeah, it's got a decent size base to it. It should be a good test. So I have my KP2S, 3S, let's try 1.2, discard now. I don't have um, a pet G profile for this. I'm going to print settings. I'm going to go to filament settings and I'm going to try to import a generic PETG file. Um, cooling. So we got the KPS at 1.2, generic PETG. Um, no supports. Let's do this at 20%. Um, let's give this a slice. So what we're going to do again with this one here is we're actually going to do the same thing. Might as well do it nice and neat with the two color, right? So we'll add a second color there and we'll slice it. And we'll see how that turns out. Hey, all right, so Pet G is done. The PETG is done. Let's pull that off the bed. Let's have a look at that. All right, so, and I'm actually surprised because the gray Pet G is, um, it's a couple years old and I haven't tried it out or anything. And it doesn't look too bad, but the true test is if we can get Pet G off the plate, right? So let's hold that up and... Awesome. Look at that. Sweet. All right. PETG comes off the powder coated bed without a problem whatsoever. That is awesome. As I said, because this pet G is a couple years old, it has. <clears throat> Let me see here. Focus. A bit of stringing on it, right? So, a bit. Well, a fair amount. But it's not too bad. It actually looks pretty decent. I'm actually quite surprised. So this is a wire gauge measurer. So I'll know what gauge of wire I have. Again, it's another um, tool. But if we look at the base here, let's see, because that's what we're really reviewing on is the, um, the powder coated base. As you saw, it popped right off, which is great for PETG um, because I didn't have to use a separator like a glue stick or Windex or hairspray or anything like that. It just came right off. So yeah, so that worked awesome. Okay, the next step on this, we're gonna try some TPU, okay? We're gonna try some flex filament. Hey guys, um, okay, TPU test. Um, it's the next day, I did a 15 hour tire test. And, well, I'm gonna show you, okay. so. If you notice in the video, I didn't put the Prusa Slicer uh, little video, little montage in for how I sliced the tires with TPU. Well, that's because one, just like uh, Petchy, I didn't have a profile for it. So I kind of wung it, so to speak, and just imported a generic profile, made a few little tweaks, and off to the races I went. However... <laughs> All right, so you see that? Yeah, it didn't come out for me. And that's okay because prints fail. And we're actually not checking, we're not reviewing the TPU, we're not reviewing my profile, we're reviewing the powder coated sheet. 
So I've got all four of these tires, donuts, burnt offerings, I don't know what you want to call those, um, on the sheet. And the review is to see how the power coated sheet works with various filaments. So this is the TPU test. So I'm going to see if I can pop these guys off, all right? Now TPU, as you know, is flexible, so if I'm flexing the sheet, it'll probably flex with it. So, oh, okay. Well, that came off. Look at that beautiful tire. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, so you know what, though? Honestly, the TPU comes off of here just fine. Not too bad at all, right? So, this works with the TPU, no problem. <sighs> Sorry guys for the audio in that last little clip. Had a problem with my microphone, but I think all the tests proved that this powder coated sheet is a decent value for the dollar. It, um, does what it's supposed to do. It gives you a really interesting texture at the bottom of the sheet. It um, allows you to print um, various filaments without using a separator of some sort. It um, hopefully will last a while. I don't know. I haven't done a long-term test on it. Yeah, so to sum up, this powder-coated sheet by Energetic 3D does what it's supposed to do. It gives you an interesting texture on the bottom. It allows you to print in different filaments like TPU and PETG without having to use a separator. And it's, as an added bonus, it's got the PEI on one side and the powder coated on the other side. Now, with that being said, this will be interesting in the long run because with a PEI sheet, once you start losing adhesion, you should wash it in soap and water. However, with a, with a powder coated sheet, you um, shouldn't wash it in water. You should just use your IPA or, sorry, or you shouldn't use acetone either. Whereas with a PEI sheet, they also say to use some acetone when it stops sticking. So it'll be interesting to see what the longevity of both sides are compared to just a single PEI sheet or a powder coated sheet, energetic sheet I bought for my Tronxy about four or five months ago is still going strong. This is a straight PEI sheet um, and it still adheres quite well and stuff. There are a couple things in there, but that's my fault, not the machines or my fault, not the sheet's fault, right? So um, now does this compare to the Prusa sheets or I think I had a King version 5 sheet here. Um, yeah, I'd say it's pretty comparable. Um, the Prusa sheet is the original one, I think, and then uh, King made his modifications, and then these guys, Energetic, came out with their powder-coated sheets a little bit ago. So um, I think that they're all pretty comparable. This has more of a texture to the King sheet than the Prusa sheet. I think the Prusa powder coating is a little bit finer than this. Does it make a difference for what we're doing? I don't know. Um, I do like the texture it leaves. Um, I will be using this. What I've seen so far from it, it does a good job. And I'm okay with it. So, you know, I'm going to be probably, I'll probably purchase one or two more of these for other machines I have. Um, yeah, there's my review. Really, it does what it's supposed to do. It's a 3D printing accessory that does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> All right. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this review of this energetic powder coated sheet from AliExpress. I'll put the link for that down below, as well as the links to the models I used to print today. If you like this review, if you have some input, leave it down below in the comments. Please leave me a like. If you're one of those people who cruises through this channel without hitting subscribe, well then stop! Hit the subscribe button, then move on. All right. Okay. Until next time, everyone, everyone be safe and peace out, okay?